So today's video is going to be a little bit different. We're not looking at a particular technique or product. We're just going to make a couple of cards. So the first thing I just want to let you guys know, I don't know whether you guys do know or not, um, I share my craft room with two house rabbits. Um, they were, before I started recording, having a nice little lie down, having a bit of a nap. Now that I've pressed record, they've decided that it was a good time to start chewing on one of their boxes. So if you do hear anything in the background, it is literally just that. So back to our card making. So these are the images we're going to pop onto our cards. So I really love how they look uh, using sort of the rainbow colours. Um, and I just think they look really, really nice together and we'll be able to create some really nice cards. So one of the other videos that I have created, I'll pop a link in the corner, is to a wreath building video. And that's where I showed you how you could create um, sort of wreath images using your stamping platform. So what we're going to do is do the same idea, but not sort of stamping the images um, down. Obviously, I've already um, sort of stamped, coloured and die cut these. So I'm going to show you what I've created um, to be able to get that wreath idea, um, be able to line these uh, images up perfectly um, and then obviously you can go ahead and make one as well they're super easy to make so the first card we're going to create is going to be um, using these brushes at the top and we're going to create a DL size card um, so I believe this was 21 centimeters by 9.9 centimeters and I've just created a mat um, and obviously we've got our white card blank so let's go ahead and just move these out of the way um, so we don't lose any So what we're going to do on this first one is um, I've got a stencil that I'm going to use as well. So this is the Woodwares stencil um, and this is the Dissolving Mesh, I think it was. Um, and I'll pop a link to all the products in the description down below. So we're going to be doing that. We're going to use some watercolour. So I've got a watercolour palette here um, and some water. And we're going to create a really nice sort of uh, wash background that's going to kind of match um, the colours that we've got is in the brushes. So I'm just going to create, um, so let me just grab my mat, should have put this down first. So I'm just going to use a glass mat here so I don't mess up my other mat. So we have got eight colours uh, in our rainbow, um, so let's start, I think, we'll go with the red, so we'll kind of move down that way. So we're just going to wet the brush, and so this isn't watercolour paper, this is just regular paper. Um, but it should be fine for what we want to do. So I'm just going to do this first, just so we've got time to let it dry. So let's get a little bit of colour. So I'm not too worried about kind of going right to the edge, and I'm just thinking about where I'm going to actually be positioning my... Um, images so I don't want it to be too perfect just want it to be um, a little bit more random I'll just sort of let that color move around a little bit then we can go into our orange just got a little bit of tissue there Gonna blend that. So let's just bring that orange up just a little bit. So again, not being sort of too perfect with this. Yellow. I'm just 
going to pick up some of that um, sort of orange. Get a little bit more of a vibrant yellow colour in there. Okay, so let's go into the green. So I really love creating my own um, background. So I've just bought this watercolour set. So I'm still sort of testing out um, all the colours and sort of really actually seeing how good I am at it. I just kind of lay down the colour. I'm not sort of too particular about how I want it um, to look. I like it, you know, it looks a little bit watery, a little bit um, sort of opaque in some areas. Um, I'm not sort of too precious about when I do it. I just, and I don't want to go sort of all the way to the end either. Um, I want to sort of leave a little bit of a gap. Just mix that in with the green. Okay, so now because we've got no purple, I'm just going to create a purple just here in the lid. Take a little bit of blue and then that red. Perfect. Let's just bring this down a bit. So what I will do afterwards is obviously just clean the um, sort of colours up a little bit. Okay, so what I might actually do just to let that sort of continue on is I might just put a little bit of that purple just up here next to the red. Okay, oh I love that, I think that looks great. So, like I said, we're just gonna allow this to dry and then we can sort of carry on with um, that particular card. So let's just tidy up my mat. So that's what's great about these um, glass mats is you can do inking, um, sort of painting, any kind of messy wet craft and it just literally wipes straight back off. Just spritz a little bit of water on there as well um, and that works perfectly. So I'm just going to take any places where I've sort of mucked the colours together. Perfect. Okie dokie. So while we're letting that first one just dry off, then we can move on to our next one. So I'm just going to pop this to the side. Let's just remove that. So the other two cards we're going to make are going to be um, eight by eight inch cards. Um, so I've got already my card blank and my matte layer again we're just going to do simple black and white mattes because i want the color to really sort of come from the images we're going to use so we'll just move that out of the way so with this one um we are going to use let me just bring them back so we're going to be using um our paints so what we're going to do for this one is i'm going to use this tiny little stencil i've got here and this is the creative expressions splatter so again just a little um stencil again i'll put a, um, a link in below so what we're going to do is just create some splatters just sort of in the background um, and then we'll be able to pop our images on so because I'm not going off the page, let me just grab some purple tape. Um, oh, there it is. So 
So I'm just going to tape down my stencil a little bit just so it doesn't move. So I'll just put that at the top. So we know that our images are going to kind of go um, in the middle. And again, we're going to create then, do like the wreath um, builder. So I'm just going to tape down my cardstock just so it doesn't move. So... I'm just going to kind of position it and so I'm not going to be using any um, sort of actual ink pads or anything I'm just going to use what is in my brush there's always ink left in the brushes so instead of then um, sort of having that really vibrant color when you uh, obviously use the ink pads I'm just going to use what's sort of left in there and I'm just going to sort of stencil through that really lightly so I don't want to get it um, uh, sort of on my cardstock outside of the stencil so what you can do is just using the purple tape just to give yourself a little bit more wiggle room you can obviously just put a piece of tape down and then we're just gonna ink through the stencil so as you can see you know we don't want anything sort of too heavy because we don't want to distract from our images so really lightly just stenciling through okay so that'll be fine I'll clean that later so the next thing that we're going to do is pop this um, into the reef builder that I have created so let me show you all of these that I have done so you can buy a proper product um, to be able to do this, but I've simply just made my own. So you can see I've got three different sizes here. So I've got a 10 by 10 centimeter, 15 by 15, and then this one is um, a four and eight by eight card, but it's sort of just about seven and a half inch, I think. Um, so all I've done is, so I've just put a back on this one, um, and you can see obviously I do use them, but just creating them in the different sizes means no matter what card that I'm making I've got sort of three options of being able to use these so let me just tell you how you can create them um so I've created this one out of some stencil um this is mylar material and what you can do to create these is you just need to have um so one uh, metal die or I've done this on my scanning cut machine so whatever size you want to do it so for example if you had a seven and a half inch um, square die you just need to die cut uh, the first square then you just turn um, your die line it up as best you can and then just cut it again so you have then got um, eight different points and then you'll be able to rotate your cardstock within those points so if I just show you so my cardstock is just slightly smaller um, but I can sort of line up in one edge and then so when I've stamped that image or put my image down I can then just rotate it one um, sort of to the next point and then just pop it back in and then do it again and that will then build up your wreath so let me know in the comment section below if you want to watch me just create one of these um, so that you can do it at home as well so what I'm going to do is just stamp uh, sorry I'm just going to fix um, this then just onto my mat And then I'm just going to take another piece of tape. So I'm just going to like, because it's it's just slightly smaller. Um, so I'm just going to line it up with that sort of top edge and try and get an even amount of spacing on both sides. So let's just put that piece there. And obviously then you want to make sure it's square. So let me just reposition this. So we're going to line it up. So I'm just going to line it up with the um, the actual grids on the mat here, and that might just help. Again, then, so we're just going to tape that one down, and we'll tape that corner down as well. So let's bring back our images so 
So again, so what we're going to do is I'm going to have them facing in towards each other. And so obviously it's going to go in rainbow order, but just to show you, so we're going to be able to create an image similar. So that, so that's what our um, sort of finished image is going to look like. Okay, so now what I'm thinking is now I've just put this on there. Um, I'm not 100% set on our background. So let's think what we can do. So I wonder whether maybe we do add a bit more um, colour to it and maybe do some brighter ones just kind of in the middle maybe. Let's see what that looks like. Let me just grab a couple of ink pads. Let's do this bright yellow to begin with. Let's just do one more big one just to kind of, looks very kind of straight that edge, doesn't it? Okay, let's see how that looks. Let's pop our images back on. Just roughly. Okay, I think that definitely looks a lot better. The one thing I might actually do I might put some paint splatters on here. So let's just bring back the watercolours. Let's go for a smaller brush. I'm going to take one of my acrylic blocks as well. I'm just going to pop some water just onto my acrylic block. Let's see. So we want a little bit of a dark colour. So we will go with the dark blue because we don't really want to go just black. So I'm just going to mix that onto the acrylic block. And all we're going to do is just kind of flick it off. So we're going to do paint and splatters, oh, there's quite a lot there, uh, on the next one as well. Mm, okay. I think that looks good. Let's just wipe that off. So we're just bringing that heat to our man. We're just, just taking a little bit of kitchen paper. I'm just going to soak up some of those. So we will be rotating this, but it just means that we can kind of have it sort of a little bit flat. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this. And I'm going to line up my point. with this line here. So then I know that that is the center of my card. So let's again, just bring back our images. I'm gonna grab some foam pads. Just take that, let's just put that there. So at the top, let's, go 
with let's go with our purple I'm just going to pop some foam pads on the back of our image so there's lots of different ways you can use this wreath builder um, this is just the way I'm using it just to sort of help um, sort of align our images um, sort of in in a nice symmetrical circle so we said that we're gonna pop them this way I think yeah so we're gonna do them facing down whoops so what I'm gonna do because that's I know that's the center of my card I'm just gonna kind of position it as best I can sort of in the middle so you can see we're just using the acetate just to give us um, sort of that central line and I've just kind of put our image in the middle um, so it sort of lines up with this piece of acetate and then when I've got it in the position that I want it hopefully that's not stuck too much so just lightly sort of drop it So then once we put that back on, we can see that's perfectly where we want it. And I've done it where it's going to go sort of around the edge of our splatters. So now we've got our first one down. What we need to do is just peel it up and we're just going to turn it Uh, so we just so we've had it there. So we're just going to put this corner now in two. Yeah. So it started like that. So now we want this image to face this corner. So we're just going to rotate it once, and then like we did previously, we're going to line it up. I'm just going to take that back down. So again you don't need to tape it all down that's just what I've done so now we need to um, go over all the way around and then that will just kind of fill that in so we're gonna go let's think about this so if we go hmm do we go mm -hmm, let me Okay, so we want to go, so we'll go pink that way and then we can go blue that way, I think. That's the way we're going to do it. So again, put our foam pads. And just by foam, using the foam pads, it'll just lift it up, lift it up nicely from the card and it'll just give it a nice little bit of dimension. So let's bring... So really we should have kept our acetate in the same position so let's just lift that up so we lined it up I'm just using my grid just to line it up so what we'll do is we'll then just leave that there let's just tape it down there as well so we take the foam pads, uh, they're covering off the foam pads. And because now we've got dimension of that one, what we can do is just line it up. I'm just doing this by eye. So let's take these bits off. It doesn't look like it's curled up anymore. Okay, and then all we need to do is just rotate it once more. Get in with our penultimate wire. Whoops. Okay, 
and then our last one. So we want it up there. Okay, so the final paint pot, squidgy, whatever it's called, tube, I guess would be the right word there. Um, so foam pads off. There we go, let's just take it out of that. I think that looks rather snazzy to sound a bit old fashioned. So let's just move our reef builder out of the way. Pop that to the side. So I think that actually looks really fun. I love the rainbow colours. I think that just looks really good. So let's go ahead and stick that um, to our card. Not going to worry about sentiments just for the moment. Um, let me get that stuck into our card. So let's ensure it's the right way. So we had it where the purple was facing up. Let's bring that down slightly. So like I said before, all that needs now is a sentiment, but you've got a really lovely 8x8 card there with that rainbow design. And I think that looks really good actually. I'm happy with that. So here is our finished card and we've just popped a birthday sentiment on here. Um, and I really like how this card's come out. I think the rainbow colour is really effective um, and it was really quite easy to make. So if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. I would love to know whether you like this type of video um, or you prefer the other videos that I've made. Um, because obviously I want to create content that you guys want to watch. So like I said, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks very much for watching and happy crafting.